Hello everyone and welcome to a couple of other games that we are going to check out by Wei Yi from the Tata Steel Masters Tournament 2024. And now we all know that he already won the tournament and uh, I, I wasn't able to show all of his games as many, many interesting games were being played every round. But now that he is the winner, uh, we will check out uh, a few more. So in this video, I'm going to show you his game against Yanni Pomnishi, uh, his game from the penultimate round against Women's World Champion Ju Wenjun and his game from the tie breaks, uh, the second game of the semifinals uh, against uh, Noderbeck Abdusatorov. Now, for those of you who have been wondering uh, what's uh, been happening with Wei Yi, uh, well, uh, seems that uh, he's enrolled in school. He he enrolled in Tsinghua University School of Economics and Management, uh, supposedly one of the uh, best businesses uh, b business schools um, yeah, in China, uh, and uh, he's been away from chess for well. Uh, he did play in the in the FIDE Grand Prix in 2019. He got eliminated by Yanni Pomnishi there, but his real active year, uh, where he was sort of active throughout the entire year, was 2017, where he uh, also participated in Tata Steel. He uh, finished in fifth place, and um, uh, yeah, he also had some some other tournaments. Uh, he he played a super tournament in Danzhou in China, where where he uh, finished ahead of uh, I think Ding Liren played there, uh, Vasily Vanchu played there. Uh, and he finished a full point ahead of them. So, uh, yeah, he's been having great results, but uh, he took a break for some five years. And now he's back, and he's definitely back with a vengeance. So, uh, let's check out his game against Yanni Pomnishi, uh, the person who eliminated him from the uh, 2019 FIDE Grand Prix. Uh, so, let's check it out. Uh, Wei Yi has the white pieces, and he opens with pawn to e4. If you are interested only in a particular game, uh, I will also have the... Um, uh, the well... But the the, the timestamps for the games if, if you don't want to see all of them. So e4, Nepo replies with e5. We have bishop to c4, going for the bishop's opening. Knight to f6, and now pawn to d3. Uh, we have pawn to c6, preparing to strike with d5, and knight to f3. We have pawn to d5, and bishop back to b3. We have bishop to b4 with check, bishop to d2 blocking, and now Nepo trades. Bishop captures, knight captures, and pawn to a5, preparing to attack the bishop with pawn to a4. So Wei Yi stops him, and now knight b to d7. We have castles, castles, uh, and now rook to e1. Uh, rook to e8, and now e captures on d5. We have c captures, and now there is a game where uh, knight to f1 was played, but here we have knight to b1, and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. And for those of you who maybe n aren't familiar with this, maybe you weren't really following what's been happening in chess some five years ago, uh, Wei Yi is the youngest player ever to to achieve the rating of uh, 2700 he achieved it with um, i believe 15 years of age uh, which is i mean uh, becoming a grandmaster at 15 is very, very impressive but becoming 2700 at 15 is well just uh, something completely else uh, but okay knight b1 we have pawn to b6 preparing to get the bishop into the game knight to c3 and bishop to b7 we have knight to b5 now uh, I in that d6 square where you could attack the rook and the bishop and queen to b8. Stopping that, we have pawn to d4 and pawn to e4. Knight back to d2 and now bishop to c6. Trying to eliminate the knight here. The bishop uh, is a nice piece, but with the pawns and light squares, the, the knight um, does appear to be stronger. So Nepo wants to trade here. We have c4, bishop captures on b5, we have a captures on b5, and now queen to f4. Nepo brings the queen into the attack and he's hoping to bring the other pieces as well maybe you move the knight maybe you bring the rook into the attack uh, that's the idea so pawn to g3 attacking the queen queen to f5 and now c captures on d5 and the problem here uh, and well maybe not a problem maybe nepo wanted it this way is that you can't recapture the pawn right away if you capture it with the knight let's say then g4 and you cannot keep defending the knight uh, that doesn't really matter what you do if you go here then h4 and the queen has to leave the defense of the knight and instead after g4 if you go queen to e6 then just rook captures um uh, or, or even knight captures on e4 and you have uh, a dead lost position here so instead after c captures on d5 nepo brings the other rook into the game rook a to d8 and now pawn to f3 uh, e captures we have queen captures offering a queen trade and nepo wants to keep the queens in the game he plays queen to g5 objectively trading queens would be best here but he did uh, crack open the white king's defenses he wants to go for the attack we have knight to c4 by wei yi and now pawn to h5 
uh, going for the pawn here isn't really possible. If you play something like queen captures on d5, uh, where you would capture on e8 with check, captures trade queens here, and now comes knight to d6 with an attack on the knight and on the rook. And the problem is, if rook to e6 trying to trade off the knights, uh, then comes knight captures on f7. So yeah, tactically you, you get uh, just demolished here if you capture then captures and captures. Uh, and if you don't, if you play something like knight 7 to, to f6, then just knight goes back and okay, you're yeah, up, uh, up a pawn, you, you will win this game. So instead after knight c4, pawn to h5, Nippo goes for the for, uh, for, for the white king, we have pawn to d6. And now uh, king to f8, probably h4 is the way to go, but still way east position is much better here. Nippo played king to f8 and it is... Uh, uh, well, here the way he uh, made a beautiful, beautiful rook lift, he played rook to e7, uh, and there's really not all that much you can do here. If you wait, then you're just gonna get um, uh, destroyed here on the f7 square, and if you trade, which is what Nepo did, rook captures, d captures with check, king captures, uh, now rook to e1 with check. Uh, more precise is queen to e2. Queen to e2, check, king f8, and now knight to d6 going after the f7 pawn. Uh, instead of what Wei Yi did, rook to a1 with check and after king to f8, now knight to d6 because now there's this annoying queen to d2 move by Nepo uh, that uh, attacks uh, the rook here and uh, well, uh, also uh, the, the, the b2 pawn, it's not... Uh, not really the the best situation here uh so here queen to c3 was played you have to defend everything you defended the rook you defend the pawn and here nepo just traded off the queens queen captures b captures and now pawn to g6 so uh, we could have continued putting on the pressure but uh, instead he he traded off the queens and now uh well nepo can still defend but it's still very very hard even with queens off the board uh you will see just how deadly uh we he is uh, and he just plays the nice calm pawn to h3 here there's no need to rush anything here by capturing because there's no good square for black. You can't really uh, move the knights anywhere, uh, especially with h3 being played. Knight to g4 is not possible. Where is this knight going? Also, the pawn just covers that. If you play knight, uh, knight to b8, then you're going to capture on f7. You don't have to do it before that. As long as your knight is on d6, the rook does not have uh, c8, does not have d8 squares, and the Nepo's position is just terrible. He plays pawn to a4. He tries sacrificing a pawn to get uh, his rook activated, but way he not interested. He just brings the uh, bishop back, bishop to a2, pawn to a3, and now king to g2. We have rook to a8. Uh, try, trying something here, but now king to f3, Wei Yi reveals his true plans, and that is king f4, king g5, king to h6, uh, rook to a5, uh, but just a nice king to f4, we have rook back to a8, and king to g5, not a move inside for Nepo, uh, rook to d8, or, or king g7, you know, you can stop king to h6, but then the rook comes to e7, and now there's a triple attack on f7, okay, rook f8 can be played, but now everything is stuck here, guarding the f7 pawn, and white can do uh, pretty much uh, whatever. Uh, so instead, after king g5, rook to d8 was played, now comes bishop captures on f7, it's time to break through here, knight to b8 attacking the knight, and now king captures on f6. We have rook captures on d6 with check, bishop to e6, of course you need to block check, knight to d7, uh, also comes with check, king captures on g6, knight to e5 with check, uh, trying to get maybe pawn captures and then rook captures, or maybe if the rook captures, maybe you can and uh, start advancing the pawn, even though it's not enough to, you know, uh, stir anything up. Uh, king to f6 by Wei Yi, and he was in this position on move 41 that Yanni Pomnishi resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is now, well, you have to move the knight, knight to d3, let's say you go after the rook, rook a1, and the, the pawn will come off, let's say rook to d8, rook captures on a3, and that's it, Wei Yi is up two pawns, complete three pawns, not two, completely winning. And of course, uh, Nepo uh, wants nothing to do with this position. Uh, time control has been reached, and uh, of course, we will win this um, uh, easily. So that's what happened in the game against uh, Nepo. A very nice revenge for that uh, Fide Grand Prix loss that um, uh, Nepo delivered at the, the 2019 uh, Fide Grand Prix. Now let's check out the game uh, against the women's world champion Ju Wenjun. Uh, uh, Wei Yi had the black pieces here and she opened with pawn to d4. We have pawn to e6, uh, pawn to c4 and now pawn to f5. He goes for the classical Dutch defense. Uh, g3, the most popular way to continue. Knight f6 and now 
now bishop to g2. We have pawn to d5 and now knight to h3. Knight to f3 is more popular, but still knight to h3 very much played. Bishop to d6 and now both players castle. So castles, castles. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, pawn to b3 here. Uh, d captures on c4. We have b captures on c4 and pawn to c5. e3 guarding the d4 pawn and now knight to c6. Now there are, are some games that reach this position. e5 is a known move. Uh, but Wei Yi plays knight to c6. And it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So bishop to b2 and now queen to b6. He puts pressure on the bishop here and just queen b3. She offers a queen trade. C captures on d4. We have e captures and now knight to a5 attacking the queen offering a trade. And again we have a queen trade. Captures, captures and the rook to c1. And seems like there are no, uh, no problems here. Uh, she, she defended well. Uh, and uh, Wei Yi has nothing to show for uh, for his effort, but uh, that could not be further from the truth. Look at this, bishop to d7, okay, knight to d2, uh, developing while de defending these pawns here, rook a to c8, getting uh, more pieces to attack the pawn, and now bishop to f1, she adds a defender. We have rook to c7, preparing to double up on the c-file, or maybe even rook to a8, uh, knight to b3, offering a trade of knights, and now rook to a8. Uh, just asking uh, if you want to capture on a5, then we can undouble his pawns. f3, and now knight to c6. We have pawn to c5, uh, striking uh, against that bishop on d6. b captures on c5, and now knight captures on c5. And just pawn to h6, not allowing knight to uh, come to g5. Knight captures on d7, we have rook captures on d7, and now she played knight to f2. Here it was uh, crucial to go pawn to a4, or even uh, bishop to b5. Uh, but in the game knight to f2 was played, and here Wei Yi plays this very, very annoying uh, bishop to a3 move. And someone, sorry, I just remembered this. Someone said in the previous video that Wei Yi uh, in Chinese literally translates to, to playing chess, uh, amongst other things. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, uh, I mean, that that's very cool. Uh, so bishop a3, uh, and now the problem is how do you defend the pawn here? That pawn is just lost. There's no way to defend it. If you capture, then just rook captures, and uh, the, the knight and the rook are attacking it. You cannot bring more defenders. So rook c to b1 was played, and now just bishop captures, rook captures, and knight captures on d4, winning a pawn. But okay, she will win the b pawn, uh, and then uh, we will have four against three on the king side. Shouldn't be enough for a victory. Well, that that is if you are playing a, a counting pawns game, which Wei Yi most certainly is not. We have pawn to f4, uh, now comes rook to a3, just a very active rook move, rook a to b1 going after the b7 pawn, now comes knight to d5, and okay, knight to d3, and now knight to c3, attacking the rook on b1, uh, rook to a1, and now pawn to b5. Uh, we have knight to b4, uh, and now look at this spectacular move by Wei Yi, he plays knight to d1. Uh, of course, the, the knight cannot be captured, uh, otherwise knight to f3 check uh, results in rook captures. Uh, and uh, it, it's hard to even make a move here. Let's say you play rook b to b1, now comes knight to f3 check, king h1, and rook to d2. How do you stop checkmate here? Uh, you have to play bishop to g2, and then knight to f2, a beautiful double knight checkmate. Look at this. Uh, so not looking not looking good for Ju Wenjun. Uh, she plays a rook back to g2, and now knight to e3. Again, harasses the rook here, rook back to b2, and now just pawn to g5. He continues marching forward. F captures, we have h captures, and bishop to g2, but now rook to c7. Uh, preparing rook to c4, uh, we have rook to e1, and now rook to c4. Just uh, improving the position. Uh, we have bishop to b7, uh, not a lot of moves for Ju Wenjun here, king to g7. We have king to f2, now comes pawn to f4. G captures on f4, g captures, and now uh, rook to g1 with check, but king to f6, and now there's really nothing more to be done here. Pawn to h4 was played, she started advancing the pawn, but here Wei Yi just played rook captures on b4, and he was in this position on move 39 before reaching time control uh, that Ju Wenjun resigned the game. Uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. You're down material, and of course, if you capture the rook, then uh, the, look at this wonderful checkmate. Rook captures on a2 with check, king to e1, and rook to e2. Checkmate, we reach the position from the thumbnail. Uh, so beautiful stuff by Wei Yi. 
defeating Ju Wenjun in the penultimate round. If you haven't seen the final round the game uh, where Yi played against Vidit Gujarati, do check it out. I also have it on my channel. It's a phenomenal game. Uh, he won that brilliantly and thus qualified for the tie breaks, where in the semi final of the tie breaks, he faced none other uh, than Noderbek uh, uh, Abdusatarov. And we are now going to show this game. First game ended in a draw. This game, Noderbek has the white pieces and Wei Yi has black. Uh, you, you've already seen how he defeated Gu Kesh, so you know that he won this game. Now it's merely a matter of how he won this game. So let's check it out. Noderbek plays pawn to e4. We have knight to f6. Look at this, the madman going for Alekhin's defense in a in a sort of a okay, it's not a must-win situation. You can also get a draw and then uh, push further tie breaks, but still, knight to f6, uh, incredible. Pawn to e5, knight to d5, d4, uh, and now pawn to d6. We have knight to f3, and now d captures on e5. Knight captures and pawn to c6. So a very, very solid approach. Uh, bishop to d3, we have knight to d7, and now knight captures on d7. Bishop captures, and now castle. So all been played before, nothing new here. Wei Yi prepares the fianchetto, his dark square bishop. Rook to e1, and now bishop to g7, pawn to c3, castles, uh, and now knight to d2. We have rook to c8, uh, and here there are a couple of games where knight to f3 was played, but here we have knight to e4, and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. Uh, rook to e8, of course you want to advance that pawn, uh, bishop to g5 now, stopping the advancement of the pawn, we have h6, bishop back to d2, and now pawn to b6, so really really slow playing this, we have queen to c1, putting pressure on that h6 pawn, king to h7 defending, now pawn to h4, uh, Noderbeck's pieces are excellently placed here, he has the knight here, the two bishops, the queen, uh, the, the pawn is coming to h5, uh, he wants to go after Wei Yi's king, we have pawn to f5, chasing away the knight, knight g3, and now pawn to e5, finally striking in the center, pawn to h5, Wei Yi uh, responds by striking on the king side, and pawn to e4, uh, we have h captures on g6 with check, but just king captures. And here, uh, bishop to e2, trying to get that bishop to h5 check in to pick up the rook here. So just king back to h7, and now knight to h5. So okay, uh, Noderbeck did uh, bust open uh, the, the, the black king's defenses, but this also does give Wei Yi the semi-open g file uh, to use for his rooks. And that he goes for, rook to g8, and here uh, we have pawn to c4, attacking the knight, and... Uh, uh, this, uh, well, as I'm showing you three games in this video, I, I, I thought about it very hard, which moment I should use for pause the video, uh, and this is the moment that I have chosen. And uh, in the game, Wei Yi did not find the correct con continuation, but uh, you guys uh, have time, you're comfortable in your own homes, uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for Wei Yi here, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, incredible maneuver. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop captures on d4. That's the stuff. You could also start with queen to h4, but bishop captures on d4 is more precise and you will play queen to h4, uh, so, so it does really matter. Now the idea is that after c captures on d5, you don't have to worry about this knight. Now you play queen to h4 threatening the f2 uh, pawn and after rook to f1 there's rook captures on g2. Uh, with check, so this is only one of the lines, but all of the lines are winning, and now, okay, you can't give a check yet, because the knight goes to g3, but you stop it, pawn to f4 first, and if white captures on f4, now you play bishop to h3 with check, king to g1, and now rook to g8 with check, knight to g3, but it doesn't matter, rook captures, bishop captures, and of course, queen captures on g3, the f pawn is pinned, king h1 and queen to g2 will be checkmate, so, uh, such a maneuver was in the position, but not pushed the pawn strong, he scared Wei Yi, and Wei Yi moved back with the knight, knight to c7, and now Noderbeck eliminates the knight, the bishop on g7, rook captures, and the bishop captures on h6, but okay, rook to g6, Noderbeck is up a pawn, uh, but this game is not about counting pawns, uh, we have bishop to f4, uh, and now knight to e6, and now give me just a second, I have to change the a letter on the little robot, uh, just so you guys don't think this is a classical game. Of course, this is a blitz game, as these are blitz tie breaks. Uh, so I don't want to uh, trick you guys. There we have it. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, queen to e3. And now, uh, well, 
uh, there's still work to be done here, but both players uh, have a playable position here. And uh, while well, you could capture on f4, queen to h4, way he brings the queen into the attack and he keeps material on the board. Queen g3, uh, queen back to f6, and now bishop to e5. We have queen to h4 and g3 now. Now Noderbeck is uh, considering king to g2, followed by rook to h1 check. So of course, queen to h3 and now bishop to f1. Chasing away the queen, queen h5, and now queen to e2, offering a queen trade and queen to h6. We have bishop to g2 and now rook c to g8. So bringing everything over to the king side uh, where he wants to attack, but it's not easy as Nodrebek's bishop is doing an incredible job at defending this position. We have pawn to d5, striking in the center, knight to g5. We have bishop to f4 now, not allowing the knight to move, but that's exactly what way he does. Knight to h3 check, and now you have to capture the knight, otherwise knight captures on f4 will be winning, so captures capture and now rook a to d1. Uh, very, very, very uh, calmly played. Rook to g4, now threatening rook captures on f4 as the g pawn is pinned. Uh, queen to f1, offering a queen trade, queen to h5, and now you have to repeat with queen to e2. It's the only way to continue. Queen to e2, and you don't have to worry about captures because there's queen captures with check. However, bishop to c7 was played. Uh, Noderbeck uh, uh, says, uh, well, there, there's nothing uh, for you to do here. I will play king g2, and uh, then maybe queen to h1 or I will now play queen to e2 uh, or I will just capture and you know win the default for myself but now the position is completely winning as f4 uh, seals the deal now you, you are not in time if you play something like king to g2 then just rook captures on g3 with check f captures rook captures on g3 and that's it king f2 queen to f3 will be checkmate so instead rook captures on e4 was played at least uh, once away he captures you will be able to capture the rook here but even that is not possible f captures on g3 by way ye and now if you capture the rook you get checkmated queen to h2 is checkmate so rook to e7 with check and now king to h6 f captures on g3 uh, but uh, yeah the bishop here is guarding the g3 pawn but only once and you are attacking it twice so rook captures on g3 way he sacrifices the exchange rook captures on g3 with check king to f2 and now rook to f3 with check it uh, doesn't matter where you're going uh, as the queen is lost. Uh, and it was in this position on move 43 that Noderbek Abdusatrov resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Once the king moves, the problem is you play rook captures on f1 with check. And if king captures, you pick up the rook on d1. And if the rook captures, of course, queen to g5 check eliminates the rook on e7. And uh, that's pretty much it. You have zero compensation for the queen. So, of course, it is pointless to continue. Uh, so yeah, after rook to f3 check, Noderbeck resigned, you know what happened, Wei Yi went uh, on to the finals to face Gukesh uh, in, in the tie breaks of the Tata Steel Masters 2024, and he defeated him, if you haven't seen it, also do check out that game, you have it available on my channel. And uh, yeah, brilliant stuff by Wei Yi, I know some of you said that you would like to see more games, uh, so I showed you the ones that I thought were, were the most interesting and the ones that we missed, uh, but yeah, also in the description of this video you will have uh, a Wei Yi's Immortal Game, if you haven't seen it, do check it out, it's uh, really really wonderful, I think it's from 2015 um, against... Uh, Lazaro Batista uh, Bruzon, uh, so do check it out, uh, it's an incredible game, but uh, you know, it's only six minute long video, it was uh, some six years ago that I've made it, so maybe it's even time to remake that video, if you would like to see a, a remake of that video with more lines, with uh, you know, a more action, also comment on that, and also I will include his game against Lu Yiping from last year's Chinese Chess League that he played, uh, considered sort of a Wei Yi's second immortal or Wei Yi's mini immortal, so do check out that one as well. The two links in the description below, uh, you know, not a bad way to spend the day. Uh, so yeah, that's the game, or those were the games, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Uh, for those of you who uh, haven't seen the standings, these are the standings, uh, before before the tie breaks, okay, it says Noderbeck is first, but uh, basically we have four people on eight and a half. Noderbeck, Gukesh, Anish, and Wei Yi. Uh, they went into tie breaks and uh, Wei Yi emerged victorious. We have on seven and a half points Vidit, Pragnananda, and Alreza uh, Firuzja. On six and a half, Yanni Pomnishi, world champion Ding Liren on six points. So even below 50%, that is absolutely amazing. Uh, Jordan van Forest and Alexander Donchenko, Parham Oksulu and uh, Ju Wenjun on four and a half and Max Warmerdam uh, who had a, a great start to the tournament but uh, he lost his last five games uh, so that's uh, you know pretty pretty crushing 
And uh, also, here are the results of the final round. If you haven't seen it, uh, Ding Luren drew his game to Women's World Champion Zhu Wenjun. Parham uh, lost to Gu Kesh. Wei Yi defeated Vidit. Noderbeck defeated Alexander Lunchenko. Anish defeated Max Warmerdam. Prague and Alireza drew their game. Uh, Prague uh, pushed for a win for a very, very long time. But in the end, Alireza was precise and was able to defend. And Nepo and Jordan drew their game. I don't think either of them were really interested in playing as they're not very, very happy with their tournament. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit of uh, info about the event. If you guys have uh, some games that you would like uh, shown, do use hashtag suggestion. Also, if you have some favorites from the challengers uh, section, also use hashtag suggestion. But until then, uh, check out the two games in the description below. Uh, really, really nice chess being played there. Uh, so yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Alireza Simon, please, Samuel Kane, uh, Gerhard Henkelman, uh, Jeremy Antipos, and David Gasparian for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. And I will be continuing my rapid action on leeches. Uh, so, you know, th there's also that. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.